Um, he does have the Sylvan Library. I like his list a lot. He, uh, hey, yes, he has everything you want. Uh, this looks really good to me. Eric Gustafson, Eric Gustafson has a somewhat less conventional list. He has uh, the 19 lands, which I like. He has Tega over uh, the fourth copy of either uh, dual land, uh, blue dual land. He has Stifle over Spell Pierce, which I'm not a fan of. He has three Force of Wills, which I like. The No, he has Spell Pierce and Stifle. Oh, he has Spell Pierce. Oh, jeez. Oh, so he cut Spell Snares. That's how he did it. Okay, so he has three Spell Pierce, but four Stifle. The Stifles are in there. He has room for those because he cut down on the number of Spell Snares and uh, the Thought Scours. So what this is going to do is he's going to be playing an even more reactive game than most other Rug Delver decks. Uh, because he has more blue instants, but his nimble mongooses, or mongoose, I suppose, won't get threshold as fast because Thought Scour won't provide the plus three to threshold. So he'll have to work to get there, and he'll get there around turn four or five as opposed to being able to get there on turn three or four. Uh, that said, he still has options on mana screwing uh, Gerald in a number of ways. He can hit his fetch lands, he can uh, Forked Bolt his mana producers early, he can Spell Pierce Green Sun Zenith. This is really going to be a good match uh, if Eric has a strong understanding of when to tap his lands and when to pass the turn with untapped mana. Um, and we can be pretty sure that Eric has a, a pretty good understanding of how to do things technically uh, in a correct manner. He's wearing a solo mid hat, so clearly into uh, competitive gaming. Yeah. And I know it's competitive video gaming, but still, people who do one thing competitively usually do all things competitively. Yeah, it's a lifestyle. So he lost the die roll, which is even more important when you're playing Stifle. Uh, and uh, Savannah for Gerald Orson. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see if he can leave things off of the Mother of Runes. That would really be ideal in a matchup like this. Yeah, Mother of Runes is not a card that you want to see if you're Delver. The reason why is that it forces you to react to it, or you more or less can't uh, lightning bolt a creature again. Yeah, but uh, Gerald Orson has a uh, turn one Noble Hierarch to start things off off that Savannah. And now we're going to see what Eric uh, Gustafsson has to respond. Alright, so Eric chooses to go ahead and wasteland the Savannah and pass the turn back to Gerald. Uh, Presumably, he kept a hand with a strong amount of disruption, and you know it's it's always awkward to go wasteland go when your opponent had a mana guy in turn one and you don't. Yeah, being behind two lands and a creature to nothing at the beginning of your second turn is fairly demoralizing. So, if th th this is a pretty strong tell for uh, Mother of Runes and no other land. Did he attack? Yeah, attack for one and pass So, the yeah, th this is a strong tell for no other land. Alright, so Eric Gustafsson, uh, able to sacrifice the Scalding Tar. Let's see, is he going to grab a... Uh... I would light this up if I could. Uh, I don't... I, I think Gerald definitely has another land. I, I actually think that him grabbing a planes there... Because you don't grab planes only if you don't have another land as Maverick. Really? I don't think so. Like, I, I think, I think him grabbing a basic planes means he has a basic forest. Because if I think if he, if he had savanna or planes in hand, then he would have grabbed uh, like something else. And he does have a horizon canopy, so. Yeah. So, uh, having a white going to cast swords to pleasure, starting that Delver of Secrets, and. Uh, Eric Gustafsson going to jump back up to 19 health, but uh, going to have to remove that from the game. Basic Forest comes down for Gerald Orson. Gerald attacking for one. And uh, Eric with a uh, Misty Rainforest here. Going to cast a Brainstorm. 
and uh, he's digging for a threat. Finds lightning bolt, ponder something. And uh, you know, the fact that Gerald was able to grab both these basics, that again makes Eric's stifle plan significantly worse. Yeah, with two fetches already used, uh, stifle gets significantly worse against a deck like Maverick. All of the other applications generally trade for somewhat less of a card. Uh, yeah, he's going to have to use it to, you know, turn Stoneforge Mystic into a Squire or something like that. I mean, he, he can still stifle night activations in Wastelands, but it's not really where you want to be. The stifling Wastelands is fine. Mm hmm Like, if you can do it. Yeah. Let's Alright, so uh, Eric here. Either going to need a burn spell or. Yep, has a burn spell. Yeah. And there's no way he can pass the turn there without having either a burn spell or Delver of Secrets. Alright, uh, Gerald here has a number of haymakers that he could play. Uh, he could play around Days and play something like a Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, he could play into the Days and try to land a Knight of the Royal Quarry. I think he Stoneforge Mystics here through, you know, beating a Days and forcing Eric to have another red spell or, you know, face an incoming jit. I would have gotten Batter Skull. Does he, does he have Batter Skull? Yep. Wow. I cannot believe you don't get Batter Skull. Yeah, here. no, that... Against Rug, like, I, I played a, a lot, lot of lot blue-white Stoneblade, yeah. and A lot of Maverick you. decks don't play Batter Skull, but I think that Batter Skull is one of those tactical elements. Maybe he has the Batter Skull in his hand. Maybe. That's the only way that his play is defensible. In which case, Eric's just not going to see it coming. But yeah, I can't imagine that Gerald has a batter skull, knows that his opponent's playing Rug Delver, knows that Rug Delver is pretty much ice cold to a batter skull. It's a four toughness lifelink guy. That has vigilance. Yeah. It's just unbeatable. So he has the other red spell as well. And uh, Eric, going to just pass the turn here. Holding up Stifle and Spell Pierce. All right, Gerald, uh, what is that card you just drew? Is that a Silver Library? I'm not sure. He's going to Stifle this. See, here, here's the issue that I have with Stifle, is every time that you have Stifle in this spot, you just jump at the ability to use it. You're like, oh, thank God, now I can get this card out of my hand. Yeah, like, uh, he breaks even on cards. Right, but you don't want to put a card in that, like, you pray after turn two that you get to use to break even on cards. Yeah, I mean, the, the like trade-off is, is that good in, card in many in. games, it just, like, especially when you're on the play, uh, it, it just outright wins you the game. It just steals the game entirely. Right, but you were going to win that game anyway. You're going to have to work a little harder for it, but if your stifle was like any other card, you're probably just going to win that game. So it was a silver library that Gerald drew. And days, that's going to be pretty good here. Yeah, I don't like that sequencing. I think that Gerald, you, you generally want to cast spells before you activate abilities against a deck with days. Yep, definitely true. Uh, the only thing I can conclude here is that. Gerald wanted to bait the days with a Sylvan Library that he does not value. But his hand at the time was Windswept Heath, Umasawa's GT. So he fetched what I believe to be the incorrect equipment with his Stoneforge Mystic. Alright, so uh, another land for Gerald here. Yeah. A bit flooded. I think the only card he really has left is Jit. And uh, Eric, looking to uh, begin to take over this game. Yeah, something interesting that happens in this matchup a lot is just that, you know, whoever draws more lands usually loses. <laughs> Seriously. Really? Something I've noticed a great deal. 
Someone just floods out. Yeah. Seems to be the most common route to victory in this, this matchup. Ooh, and a Nether Oak Ray. That's an incredible card against the Rock Delver deck. With all of those lands already in the graveyard. It's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Eric has no pressure to speak of. Draws Tega, plays it. Has Lightning Bolt Spell Snare. And I think he just loses at this point. Yeah, I mean, Knight is just too much. Well, I mean, he's he could cast Jit, get it Spell Snared, attack for seven. He could use Knight, just tutor up a bunch of Wastelands. I wouldn't mind Seems cutting him off. I wouldn't mind using Knight to cut Eric off of green here. We well, he can't do it entirely all in one turn. Sure, he can do it over two turns, at which point his Knight becomes a two turn clock. It's definitely true. And Eric can't peel you know, some sequence of green chump blockers as well as flipping his Delver. Right, so Zenith for Zenith three for resolves. Yeah, so that's, that's another, another knight. knight of the Royal Quarry. Yeah, that'll just about put Eric away. So where did this game go wrong for Eric? Um, knight of the Royal Quarry hit the battlefield, and Rug Delver cannot beat Knight of the Royal Quarry free board. I agree. Um, so, so that's something that's really you, important to remember. Do you like the turn one wasteland? I, I feel like letting Gerald get away with a noble hierarch in the early turns is you know, a, a real consequence. And, you know, not not leaving yourself with the land in play to start your second turn can be an issue when you want to cast multiple spells in a turn. Oh, that's definitely true. I mean, it's it's an odd thing, though, because you're, you know, you're, you're playing the stifle version of the deck. You really have to commit. I don't even know that I flip my Delver there. I think I just concede with spell, spell Pierce on top of my library. I mean, you're dead on board. Why would you give your information, your opponent that information? Uh, there, that's definitely a, a point where Gerald now knows appreciably more about Eric's deck. Eric isn't winning this game. Uh, he, th there are not a sequence of, there are no sequence of cards that. Eric can draw that will let him achieve victory. And he's going to ponder and look for them. And just going to pack them in. And yeah, I mean, at that point, your opponent has two Knight of the Royal Quarries in play. Why would you uh, show him Spell Pierce? Yeah, there's not really much of a reason to. Like, letting him play around that card is a very real consequence of showing him the card on top of your deck when you're dead. Well, I don't think Spellpierce is going to stay in his deck after sideboard against Maverick. Maverick's like all dudes. So, I think if you're on the play, if you're Eric, you d you obviously want to like stifle his opening fetch land. He plays six and. You know, the, the, the issue with Spell Pierce and why I think it's actually fine on the play is that Green Sun Zenith is a very realistic turn one play. And That's true. And protecting your Delver from Swords to Plowshares while working the Mana Denial angle is one of the better ways to beat Maverick if you're Rug Delver. That makes sense. So keeping them on one or two mana and Spell Piercing a Swords to Plowshares can be decisive. Uh, what do we have to bring in over on the uh, Maverick side of the board? All right, so uh, Maverick has a Sylvan Safekeeper, uh, an Even good. Mind Sensor, Thrun, which is awesome here. Yeah, Thrun Thrun's is, a nightmare for Rug. Yeah, Path Exile, also very good. Yeah. Choke, uh, surprisingly okay. Yeah, I, wouldn't, you know, I would not, not board it in. It's, it's not a knight, it costs as much. Yeah, that, that's the thing, is like so many people board in Choke and like against rug and like I've seen people and keep bad hands to a Delver. choke and they just lose to a Delver, yeah. 
Linvala, Keeper of Silence. Most people would not sideboard that in against Rug, but I, I'm fine I, with it. I do. It's, it's a, a four three four flyer. flyer. Yeah, it's it's a three four flyer, and I don't think I know it's I know it's legacy, and I know that people are you know killing you on turn one and stuff. But you're playing against Maverick. Maverick's playing fair, and they're beating those decks by interacting with them. And you're playing somewhat fair, and you're interacting with the other people. And a three four flyer is extremely difficult for Maverick to deal with. You mean Rug Delver? For Rug Delver to deal with. Yeah. I, I mean, it just beats the stats of all of uh, Rug Delver's creatures, save Tarmogoyf, and... Tarmogoyf doesn't fly. Tarmogoyf doesn't fly. And uh, for toughness means it's out of range of all their burn spells. Correct. Uh, so I, I like bringing in Linvala there. Sort of counterintuitive, but... Definitely worth considering. Uh, over here, we have a much more... Uh, pinpoint sideboard uh, that Eric is playing. He has three Tormod script, three chill. So six slots dedicated up front to graveyard strategies and red decks. Solely and exclusively. There is no crossover value. It is a haymaker that looks to end the game against those strategies. And that, that, that's a lot of sideboard space just to hate out Dredge plus Reanimator, and then Mono Red Burn. Yeah. But I mean, it's not even necessarily going to be effective. Right. It's not like a guaranteed win. Torrent Script is not, say, Leyland of the Void. Very true. Um, um, so what he elemental. can bring in is his one Sulfur Elemental, and his four Submerges, and perhaps his uh, two Ancient Crushes. He didn't see Batter Skull, though. Uh, I generally... Uh, don't bring in both crutches unless I see Batter Skull. I'll bring one in for a Jit, two in for a Batter Skull. Because you really can't beat a Batter Skull going long. Yeah, Rug, it rug doesn't cannot happen. beat the Batter Skull. See, that's why I love playing Blue White so much, and I don't understand why people don't play Blue White anymore. Like, I felt like I just didn't have people spell pierce mission. your Batter Skull, man. It happens. They light up your Stoneforge Mystic, you get to five, you get to six mana, you feel proud of yourself for playing around days, you cast Batter Skull and it gets Spell Pierce and you feel miserable. No oh, man, I always know what they have in their hand. I, play I mean, I did it to Ben Hayes in the Invitational, it was miserable for him. And then he had Academy Ruins and I ate it with Scavenging Goose. Delicious, delicious Batter Skull. Yeah, I mean, things can go wrong. Yeah. Rug Delver's the type of deck where you know, if things go right, you kind of just beat everything. So. Then again, so is Every deck. Stoneforge Mystic. Yeah. Yeah. Any deck that casts Brainstorm and then you, you draw cards in such a way that you could have brainstormed them there in the first place, you're going to win. I, I think that... Brainstorm is just so good. I think that... The problem with Eric's rug deck, I, I, I figured it out. It's really good on the play, really bad on the draw. And there's no in-between ground. I want everything in his main deck on the play, and I want none of it on the draw. I want to cut Stifle on the draw immediately. I don't really want Spell Piercer Daves, and he only has two Spell Snare as a way to catch back up on the draw. Yeah, spell Snare is just so important when you're on the draw. Yeah. Like being able to get their two drop for one mana and then play your own two drop and then leave yourself with, you know, a two drop and then with a one drop. Yep. After turn two. Like that's that's game breaking. Yeah, it's that's one a of the reasons why spell snare is just so absurd. It's one of I the can't best believe spell snare is so expensive now. Monetarily? Yeah. It's like ten dollars or something. Spell snare. Jeez. Yeah. Like, I remember just, like, them being in piles of random draft stuff. Yeah, man. On tables, stores all the time. Maybe they'll reprint that, too, in uh, Return to Ravnica. So, uh, Eric Gustafsson, uh, cracking a fetch land, searching his library for this volcanic island, and uh, no turn one play. Gerald, uh, with the windswept teeth, a crack it, and uh, does he have the stifle? Nope. No, he's not. So when he draws his Stifle in three turns, does he want that in his deck? 
No. Just just a question for you at home. We're thinking about ever putting Stifle in a Star City game sleeve and taking it to a tournament near you. All right, so Gerald uh, with the turn one Noble Hark again. Eric gives so a Eric thumbs up. Does nothing with his first turn of mana. Getting that uh, fetch land, can grab himself a Shrub Cloud now. Probably playing a Tarble Base. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure he has to have one threat, right? Yeah. It could be a Nimble Mongoose and holding up. Yeah. He, so he's just got to be on, like, exactly Spell Pierce. Or exactly Spell, spell Pierce or Spell Snare. Like, that, that's what he was hoping to get was a Green Sun Zenith. So he has Scrub Ranger in hand, he has Dryad Arbor in hand. What he actually wants to play is another Noble Hierarch. Why he taps his Noble Hierarch, I'm less certain. Any insight on why he tapped his Noble Hierarch? Um, did he attack? No. He cast it. He did that one? Was the one he cast? He, he Whoa, cast Noble oh. Hierarch off of Noble Hierarch and then tried to plow Nimble Mongoose, only to be informed it has Shroud, and then passed the turn. Interesting. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, okay, so he has Scrub Ranger, so he clearly, like, has a play here. Uh, I'm going to chalk Gerald's decision to fetch Umazawa's Jite over Batter Skull in game one up to unfamiliarity with the format uh, and possibly a dogmatic decision based on friend's advice uh, going before the match rather than uh, a more calculated decision. Just, well, I mean, you never know. Like, maybe maybe he's played the match before and he feels that... Jid is better than Batter Skull? Yeah, and I, I would strongly disagree with him. Um, I've always got Batter Skull against the rug decks, but... I mean, different people do play different matchups differently. Right, but the only way you lose is you get raced. And the only way to... I mean, like, Batter Skull is the best way to never get raced. Oh, wow, that's a really aggressive Force of Will. I mean, I think you have to be about that aggressive with your Force of Wills uh, in this matchup. Huh, interesting. I think that you just need a Delver of Secrets. And Thrun. that's Thrun. Thrun's going to get in for six a turn, is the thing. Yeah. Gerald uh, going down to 16 here. And uh, or 17, rather. 17, no big deal. Um, 15, a bigger deal. Yeah, 16, no big deal. 15, bigger deal. Uh, uh, Eric's the thing main is, threats all have three power. Yeah. So, like, as long as your life total is not divisible by three, you're always fine to spend the life until it is yeah. once again divisible by three. So even if, if it is divisible by three, you can spend another two points of life and be fine. Yeah. Unless you get forked bolted. But your dude's probably got forked bolted. Ah, another sort of supply shares. This is about as bad for Eric Gustafson as it looks. Being covered two to one on permanence and nearly even on cards in hand. Yeah, Thrun Not an enviable also spot. Just the biggest disaster ever for the rug. Deck. Yeah. Rug has very close to no outs. Alright, uh, Eric uh, cracking that scalding tarn. Bring himself down to 17. Thrun will demand that the game be done. <laughs> Yeah, without Gerald's help, Tarmogoyf will never be big enough to block this double exalted run. And eventually it will just abyss Eric down to nothing and then eat him. There was a turn, however, where if Gerald had, if Eric had had Forked Bolt, he could have taken out two Noble Hierarchs. Definitely. And I mean, is, that would have just been a complete and total blowout. Yeah, yeah. Thrun would still be in Gerald's hand. He'd be a land away from casting it. And he has five mana in play. All of all of Eric's conditional counters are just so bad right now. 
Yeah. So that green sends you can grab him a knight of the heart, a knight of the royal quarry. Pretty bad for Eric. I mean, post board Eric does have some merge. Right, but it doesn't hit Thrun. Yeah, but I mean, it it hits Knight, which is important. Right. But we were talking about this earlier. When does it hit Knight? Um, there are different times when it can hit Knight. When you, when somebody activates a Knight, you can submerge it and then sh get the Knight shuffled back into their deck. Yeah, pretty good way to use Knight. That looks to Sometimes be Sulfur Elemental. Sometimes you just want to put it on top, though. He's just main phasing Sulfur Elemental. Doesn't it, it have split second? And flash. And flash. Interesting. Swords to flash, shares to magic metal. Attention magic players. Side events will be closing at the end of this round. And uh, so just five cards left in a uh, graveyard for Gerald at this point. Yes. So he has a... Uh, Two lands, Knight is a 4-4, four, four. Uh, can block the Nimble Mong boost with ease. Eric does have some merge, but I feel that it's too late What's for What's he going to do, man? Yeah, he's just getting thrunned. Wasteland him make Knight bigger? Yes! Knight is a 5-5, five, five. thank you. So, uh, he untaps and... Draw a Stoneforge Mystic to go with that Scrub Ranger. I think you just swing with Run. Yeah. Okay. Decide to swing with both. Yeah. That's that's fine. Um, Eric deciding on his blockers here. Decides to go to tank it. Go to take eight. Now he goes to six. Just passes the turn. Has Scrub Ranger in case he needs to do anything. Eric cheekily attacks with his 1-1. One, one. Gerald very graciously declines to eat it with his Thrun. It's untapped by a theoretical Scrub Ranger. And uh, Submerge. One of, one of the best cards you can have in your hand in this matchup, but at this point, Thrun is just so resistant to those types of things that it's just running away with this game. Yeah. I mean, you kind of know that he's dead when he chooses not to eat a so, uh, Nimble Mongoose with a Thrun. That's it, Eric. Uh, of course, concede. Gerald Orson playing Green White Maverick. Mm -hmm. It'll take that down somewhat easily. And you see, this is this 